Thought Now, my universe in Kalsa. And I'm playing with guitars, although I don't play guitars. This is Gurdita Singh's great guitar collection. I'm amazed, actually, when, when you study Yogi Bhajan's teachings, uh, that how much is in every single lecture. You can just take a few sentences out of a lecture and really gain some kind of insights into yourself or some inspiration. Very shortly, we're going to have the database of all Yogi Bhajan's teachings up, and I'll be talking to you more about that later. But here we are now going into late fall and into uh, winter time, into October, November, where fall is happening in different places, spring and summer down under, and it's a good time actually for reflection. I was just reading this one lecture by Yogi Bhajan that happened about this time of year, October 3rd, 10 years ago in 2002. And just this thought really struck me. He said, Inner conflict is a vital sign of life. With every change of longitude and latitude, you change the magnetic field. Though you want to go forward, you have a conflict. Will I be safe? Will it be all right? An unfortunate part of the age of Pisces is that people get stuck in time and space. In the age of Aquarius, they will not. If you're not willing to face that change, there's no way I can help you. And then later on in the lecture, he goes on to say, but just imagine this. You have an inner conflict. Why has inner conflict come to you? because you have the power given by God and Guru to solve it. It's interesting, I was, I was thinking about being stuck in time and space and the image that came into my mind was a statue. You know, in countries all over the world there are these statues of people from the past. Either they were, you know, founders or they were war heroes or they played some significant role or it was just maybe someone that had a bunch of money Maybe they were mythical things, but a lot of people don't actually know what they are. They don't have relevance to that time and space. We're in this time now and the dawning of age in Aquarius that things have to move and you have to change. But the whole thing comes up now because a lot of our structures that have supported us in the past through culture and through family don't have quite as much relevance anymore. They're not quite as genuine and authentic in supporting us because we've really expanded in our consciousness, in our mind, in our capacity to really understand ourselves as souls and, and how we're traveling in this transition time. So the idea is not to be a statue that pigeons sit on. <laughs> the idea is to allow the change and to welcome this kind of conflict. Because whenever conflict happens, it really does mean that you have the ability within yourself to work with it and solve it. I was thinking about when I, because I have plenty of conflict all the time within my own self, and on a whole variety of things. And some I recognize very consciously, others take me a little bit surprised, like, why am I reacting to this, you know, when I actually should know better at this particular time and my age at, at this particular age. But it's one of those things where if I really reduce it down, if I really take it to a place where I understand the beginnings and of this conflict is my relationship to my higher self or my relationship to my unknown or my relationship to God. That's where the conflict is, right? It's I haven't resolved that part of myself to actually have the faith, the wisdom, the experience, and the intuition to allow things to work out and to come up through me so I can, so I can deal with this conflict. And so the meditation that we're going to do today is an English mantra that Yogi Bhajan used really extensively in the early years of 3HO when he was teaching. And that mantra is, God and me, me and God are one. 
And so it's really, it doesn't matter what language you speak natively, chant these words just like it was a Sanskrit mantra or a Gamruki mantra or whatever because there are certain movements of the mouth, the M sound, the D sound in God, that will have that mantric effect. So, you'll do the tune in mantra, Om Namo Guru Dev Namo, through three times. And then you're going to have your hand in this mudra, Gyan Mudra, with both hands. And you're going to place the right hand over the left at heart center height, but not against the chest, out in front. And so that this one hand is against the back of the other hand. And you're going to hold this position with the eyes closed, focused at the brow point, And you're going to chant that mantra, God and me, me and God are one. And you can just recite it in a spoken language like this. God and me, me and God are one. God and me. Me and God are one. There's a great CD actually with Yogi Bhajan chanting it called the Destiny CD. You may have a copy of it because if you donated to KRI, we, we might have given you a copy of it already. But you use this mudra and you recite along with him as you say this, although you can do it by yourself a cappella as well. And so we'll do this for 11 minutes this month. And it's interesting because once you get into that place where you have that inner connection to your higher self, that you know you're unknown, that the God within you is and you are one with it, you get into that state that really is beyond fear, beyond revenge, and you can really feel that part of yourself. And if that's the base of the conflict for you in moving forward through your life, because you've got to change we all have to change at this time, then it can be something that will really serve you well. So I really hope you enjoy this fall. You may have heard the rain falling on the roof here as we are shooting this, this video. And also, bring music into your life. Play with guitars. Have guitars. Bring that sense of joy to yourself. So you can walk through the inevitable conflicts which are vital to your life and be consistent within yourself and realize this God within. Sat now.